So if you've never used Simulink before and you're having trouble making your Simulink model, this is how you do it. Um, you open MATLAB, then you type Simulink. It brings up the library browser. And it has a bunch of blocks that you can use in a model. To start creating your model, you hit the new button. It opens a new window where you can start drawing. So uh, you just have to drag and drop stuff in here and just modify the properties and hit the play button. That's all you need to do. For this particular problem, you want to simulate this differential equation. So I can rewrite this differential equation as x double dot is, is a sum of these three terms. And since it's a second degree differential, second order differential equation, I would have have to have two integrators in there because I would have x double dot when it goes through an integrator, I should get x dot and another integrator should produce x. So you have two storage elements. The integrators can be found in the continuous category. Here it is. first one and the second one so uh, the input coming into the first integrator that would be x dot dot right and what's coming out is x dot and after going through the second integrator, what you get is the x. Now, looking back at the equation, you had x double dot is, uh, this quantity actually turns out to be 32. And this quantity turns out to be 64. So I want x double dot is negative 32 times x dot minus 64 times x plus f so I'll do just that here I have x dot I need to multiply it with negative 32 so that should be I need a gain element so I'm doing a multiplication it should be in the math operation section so here is a gain I'm going to bring it in and uh, I need to flip it to the other side because I'll have x dot going into x dot dot. So you do that by going to format and then flip block. Or you can use the shortcut key control i. And I'll add another gain element and I'll hit control i like this. And maybe an them like this. So I have x double dot. Right so I'll connect this to x double dot. Set the gain to minus 32. So the sample time property of any block, you should ideally not have to change that because Simulink will run your simulation. Uh, for particular time steps and that is usually good enough you don't have to mess with that you just leave it at minus one so that simulink will set it for you and the second gain element will multiply with x so I have x times minus 64 I'll set the gain to minus 64 And then all of these are being added together with the input f. So uh, ignoring f for the time being, let's pull in an adder. It should also be under math operation. So I'm not sure what's the difference between this rectangular adder or, uh, or this adder. I guess they work the same. 
so I'll just pull that pull this in. I mean you could even use a subtractor and not use the negative signs here. But that that's your choice, it doesn't matter. So I've connected the add the output to x double dot and one of the inputs would be the gain. Ah, sorry, x dot times negative thirty two and the other input to the adder would be x times minus sixty four. So um, I'm I'm done with implementing this much of the equation and I also have the input f. Now I don't know what that input f is going to be. So let me assume it's it's a sinusoid. It's a sinusoid, so I'm going to to the sources section and look for a sine wave. Yeah. So now the thing is this this summer has only got two inputs. You could uh, cascade several summers to increase the number of inputs or you can just double click on it and it says that if you read this it says that if you want to increase the number of inputs you just add a plus sign like that and I'm going to move this out of the way. So now I have three inputs and maybe I should move these signals around So this ideally completes your implementation of this equation. You have x double dot is minus 32 x dot minus x double dot is minus 32 times x dot minus 64 times x plus f. So I'll label this as f. And we ought to be able to observe a few things. For example, I might want to see what x looks like and what the input to the system looks like. So uh, we'll connect an oscilloscope or scope which can be found under the sinks section. So here you have a scope for the input and the scope for observing x. Here we connect them. Delete the parts we need. So there it is looking good. And you can change the label on the scope. So this scope is showing the input. This scope is showing the output. And your model is complete if you just uh, part B and so on. We will see how to configure the, the input to the correct settings and the initial conditions in here. But let, let's uh, say keeping the default settings of the amplitude and frequency. Uh, this is the, the time for which the simulation is going to run. Let's say I only wanted to want it to run for five seconds. I'll put five in there and then I'll hit the play button. So it's, it's done simulating it. I can double click on this scope. So this is the sine wave. Uh, whatever part of sine wave was produced in five seconds. And this is the output. You can zoom in with by hitting these binoculars. And this is what came out for X. If you want to observe the velocity, just, just pull in another scope and you can Connect that to x dot. If you run it again, so that's the velocity. And that's the input. So, and then you save your model somewhere.
that's how you make a basic simulink model. Thank you.